Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I just wanted to talk to you quickly about rejections and number of rejections you should expect because you should expect to get a lot of rejections. And that may seem discouraging, but it's actually a lot you can do with those and there's really good feedback that you can get from those. So first things first, how many rejections should you expect? So you should expect that 75% of your applications are going to be rejections and that may seem like a huge huge number but if you sent out your 12 uh, sites which is a little bit above the average uh, you should expect to see three interviews nine rejections now of those rejections probably three or four of those won't ever come uh, it's unfortunate but some of the sites just have way too many and then when it comes to the number that each site sends, if you're applying to like a UNC, well, they are literally sending hundreds of rejections out where someplace that is maybe only uh, getting 100 applications uh, might send out something like 50 or 60 rejections and uh, send out maybe 40 uh, interview uh, invitations. So the, the numbers can be pretty daunting. And I think the problem is, is that you're comparing it to uh, undergraduate acceptance and pharmacy school acceptance. So again, the, the pharmacy school acceptance now uh, is close to 90%. So one out of 10 schools would send you a rejection. And when you guys applied to pharmacy school, it was actually closer to one in five. So about 80%, a little bit over 80% of students were accepted at pharmacy school. Uh, and then about a little less than 20% were not. So when you flip that and now you're getting up to three rejections for every one acceptance, you're looking back like, oh my gosh, I did not apply to enough spots. And, and that may be true. But in general, in general, the acceptances you do get are going to be at the places that you want the most. And unless you're applying to only academical medical centers like you are applying to I don't know, um, Brigham and w Women's, Yale, you know, um, Mayo, MD, you know, Cancer Center, uh, Cedar Sinai, uh, just you know the, the top hospitals in the country, and those are your only applications. Uh, you should be seeing some mix, just as when you applied. Hopefully, you had sent some mix to you know, kind of reach, if you want to put them that way, reach residencies, uh, residencies that you feel you match well with and that you were, did your appies at, and then those that you felt that maybe they're a little bit more rural, a little bit going to get a fewer uh, applications, um, that kind of a good mix. But rejections are easy to send out early because what they've done is those programs that are sending them early um they've already kind of got some huge number. And so what they do is just to manage it, they're going to get rid of many of their applicants. But those that are in the gray area, those who are on the bubble, they might save that rejection for later. Maybe they find that the people that uh, they've invited, a bunch of them don't want to come uh, or will not interview. And uh, they put themselves in a position where uh, they uh, still have a couple extra later. But just to be fair, a lot of times interview acceptances come at the end of January, early February. So there's still hope for many of you. But again, if you want to start thinking about phase two, the, the way that I do it is to get you doing something positive first, which is you send me the cover letter to a place that you did get an interview. Or if you've gotten no interviews to the place that you wanted the most, but you were really surprised that someplace that you felt you should have gotten an interview, uh, you didn't, and then I can kind of uh, evaluate it, make the changes to the cover letter so that you are ready to go uh, in phase two. And then, of course, I'll do those revisions uh, once that week comes or weekend comes. So uh, residency.teachable.com if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me. But uh, the big thing with rejections is to know that you will be getting more rejections than you've ever gotten in your life if the only thing you've ever done is apply to pharmacy school. Because honestly, it's uh, maybe this will make you feel better. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But it's harder to get your driver's license than it is to get a residency. 
So only a little over half of people pass their driver's license test on the first try. And it's going to be two thirds of those who received a single interview or more will match. Now this changes based on your school and where you are and some other factors. But in general, once you get that first interview, your odds are you know, obviously going from zero or you've not interviewed anywhere, to now you are at about two-thirds. And then we kind of adjust that based on your college and, and some other factors. So uh, if you got questions for me, TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com. But uh, just to let you know, rejection is part of the process, and it's a little bit daunting. And the thing is, is that we as humans are meant to respond more emotionally to threats, which is a rejection, than we are to good news. So let's pretend that instead of getting, you know, let's say you applied to 12 places, and let's say that if you got nine acceptances and three rejections, even as you're taking those nine acceptances, you're still looking at those three like, what's up with those guys? What happened there? And you just can't get it out of your head. So it's the same thing. Uh, there's another... Um, principle where you take losses worse than you take gains. So if you lost $100 and you gained $100, the joy that you get from gaining the $100 actually doesn't cover for the loss of the $100, even though you're back at zero. So if you went gambling, you were in the stock market, whatever it was, you are still thinking about that loss like, man, if I hadn't lost that 100, I could be at $200 or I could be at $100 instead of $0. And it's just the way that we're wired. And it's good reason. It's if you watch a cat, you know, my cat, when it goes out, it avoids things that are threatening and it stays away from things that are threatening. And in the same way, the rejections at first may make you feel like you want to avoid those things. Um, but if you want to start working on phase two to have something to do, I can help you with that. But I also want to make a uh, book recommendation. And I rarely do this, but um, this one is so good that I think you would really appreciate it. Uh, it's called Rejection Proof, How I Beat Fear and Became Invincible Through 100 Days of Rejection. And... Uh, this guy did this really neat thing where he tried to get rejected 100 times in a row in 100 days. And he had this uh, blog about it and then it went viral. And then he wrote this book. And then Mike Chamberlain, one of my favorite all-time narrators, is just a great voice to listen to. This book, as you're listening to it, what happens is, is that you start thinking about rejection as more of a salesperson where you every rejection is getting you closer to an acceptance and in sales it's a numbers game in many cases that you have to get a certain number of rejections to get a certain number of yeses and in residency it's a numbers game too but unfortunately you don't have like the salesperson has that background to know well how many should i be sending out and unfortunately, many of you have under, fortunately gone under the number. And some of you may have gone over and you're like, oh my gosh, I have so many interviews that now I actually have to turn some down. So the, the image on the front, uh, I don't know if you can see this. It's, it's kind of a, a really cool one. But it's an umbrella and a bunch of no's are raining, like real raindrops rain. And the umbrella protects them from the no's. So being rejection proof really isn't about not getting rejected. It's about welcoming that rejection as feedback. And I loved what I saw uh, in one post, which was, and I hope that you think this way, is that rejection is simply redirection. All right. Well, if you want to talk to me, Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com, I'm happy to answer your questions. Even if you just kind of like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Can you explain it? No problem. Uh, I love uh, connecting. Uh, otherwise, residency.teachable.com.